Master's of Science in Business Analytics. So Master's of Science in Business Analytics is, in, is wholeheartedly a business degree. Um, it has gotten a lot of attention, primarily because it uses data. Um, some programs have machine learning, um, uh, Python built into them. But when I talk to students, they're always confused about what the difference between an MSBA degree is and, an, and a Master's of Data Science degree. Well, the simple answer is this is a business degree. Your focus is on using data to answer business uh, problems or make business decisions. So the program structure usually across the US uh, is relatively short. One year program, uh, depending on the program, it can be nine months, so it can be from September to June. It can be 12 months um, from September to um, September or it can be 15 months, which would be September to December, um, with varying, um, with different variations. And it might be available for spring admissions, or I should say spring intake. Um, so it really depends on the program that you are looking for. Most of these programs are gonna be STEM eligible, which means that you get 36 months of OPT, and I'll, uh, I'll come back to this point in a second. Um, their curriculum tends to be theoretically um, and practically based curriculum, meaning that you're going to get uh, PhD professors who are teaching you their theories and how they are um, how they are cutting through um, the industry and providing you those tools so that you can you know go out into industry and perform those um, those tasks. Most of the programs have a capstone program, but it's a very Good distinction that I'll, I'll make in, in, a, in a later note. And tuition is relatively expensive. Um, the Master's of Science in Business Analytics came about in 2009-ish. And since then, it has blown up here in the United States. There's close to probably around 200 programs um, that are focused on business analytics from leading business schools. A typical curriculum, it gives you analytics programming, data management, data visualization, data mining, forecasting, marketing analytics, and um, operations to supply chain. Um, this is very different from a master's of data science, and I'll explain the difference when I switch over to the data science. But as you can see, the analytics and the programming is less in an MSBA curriculum. So a lot of students that are coming from different regions of the world and are much more technical, they have experience in Python, they have experience in C, or they have experience um, in doing machine learning, they come into these programs because they see business analytics as a pathway towards becoming a data scientist. And when they arrive and they do the program, they often say, mm, I wish the program was more, much more technical. I enjoyed it. I had a great experience, but I really wish I had more hands-on. I had more advanced principles to learn. This is then turns into the experiential learning. The experiential learning um, in MSBA programs tend to be a capstone project. That can either be faculty or industry partners. And it is very difficult to know which one is which. Um, UCI Mirage has an industry partner um, capstone project. And what that means is that they contact large companies and they ask if they have problems to solve using proprietary data. <laughs> With proprietary data, we give students the ability to practice on real world, uh, real world problems. And so it gives us a leg up when it comes to recruiting other students is because we're giving you something that not a lot of other programs can offer. Smaller schools, um, schools that, uh, that may be in the Midwest um, here in the US, they tend to not have as many companies uh, surrounding them, primarily because of where they are located, even though they may have large companies. Um, and so they rely on faculty to create capstone projects. As I said, it's a little bit difficult to discern which one is which, who has a capstone project and what type of capstone project that they do, because not everyone advertises it the same way. And that's part of where a consultant can kind of come and help and say like, hey, you know, out of the 10 programs that you've shortlisted, only four or five really meet all the needs that you're looking for. So let's focus on that. Um, another part of 
MSBA programs is the internship in CPT. So as I said, the STEM eligibility and um, um, OPT and CPT come hand in hand. CPT is for you to be able to work um, while you're doing the program. This usually comes after you've been in the US for nine consecutive months. So if you're choosing a MSBA program that's nine months, you'll be able to work for three months post your graduation and then tack on those 36 months of OPT. Now, this is not always the case because you have to be here in person. So if you're doing an online program, you may not be able to take advantage of that. Um, and lastly, um, MSBA programs are centered around business schools. So anywhere that you look, a MSBA degree is going to be offered by a business school. So again, it goes back to, this is inherently a business degree. Not only that, the faculty are coming from backgrounds in economics, finance, and statistics, which is very uh, prestigious in its own right and has a lot of overlapping skills with data science, but it's not to the extent of a data science faculty. Uh, the Master of Data Science. So the Master of Data Science is structured a little bit differently um, and yet the same. The programs are usually anywhere between 12 and 15 months. They're usually full time and on campus. There's quite a few notable programs that are online. However, the curriculum heavily focuses on statistics or computer science or both. There's, as I mentioned, there's about 200 business analytics programs. There's about 67 true data science programs here in the US. Out of those 67 uh, programs here in the US, about 15 um, are able to teach both sides of the curriculum, meaning that they have the capacity and faculty to teach statistics and computer science. As you do your research, you'll find that Masters of Data Science program lean heavily towards one or the other, statistics or computer science. And when students come out and get into the work field, they often feel like they need one or the other um, that they just weren't taught in school. So our program here at UCI, and along with 14 others, really have the capacity to teach both uh, statistics and computer science. And this is very rare because we have established faculty in these areas. So when you're looking for Masters of Data Science program, I encourage all of you to really look at the curriculum and whether or not it leans one way or the other because that tells you a lot about where they are as a program. Similar to the MSBA degree, this is a STEM eligible degree in its 36 months of OPT. Uh, there is an experiential learning, but usually with MDS programs, you also have um, an ex experiential with a capstone and an internship integrated into the curriculum, which is a little bit different than MSBA. Some MSBA programs do have an internship, but they tend to be relatively rare. Tuition is actually lower um, for these programs in comparison to um, an MSBA degree, and that's primarily because you're not paying um, for the price tag of a large business school here in the US. So a typical curriculum for Masters of Data Science is linear algebra, optimization methods, probability, machine learning, neural networks, time series analysis, heavily, heavily technical um, application. So if you're a student and you're trying to discern where you should go, you ultimately have to answer the question, do you want to be in business management or do you want to be solving complex problems um, within an organization? If it's the latter, an MS, MDS is the, the degree for you. So as an experiential learning, um, <clears throat> MDS programs do tend to have capstone programs. And similar to MSBA, depending on the program, it is either faculty-driven or industry-based uh, partners. So with MDS here at UCI, we have an industry-based partnership and we partner with Children's Hospital of Orange County and we've also partnered with Edwards Life Sciences um, to help their organizations advance their data science teams and their data science initiatives. To give you an example, the Children's Hospital of Orange County here 
um, uh, here in Irvine is looking to do an image analysis to help diagnose pediatric cancer at an earlier state. And they're using ma machine learning models and um, other methods to help, help doctors diagnose at an earlier rate. Um, obviously, our students are heavily involved with this project and the results won't be immediate, but they're building the foundations for them to define that problem. Not only that, but masters of data science also tend to leverage um, the faculty and the, um, the ecosystem that they have. So as I said, um, MDS programs tend to be centered around computer science, engineering, mathematics schools. Um, so they have a lot of a lot of resources put into it. Uh, the faculty tend to be from backgrounds in computer science, in data science, in statistics, or mathematics. So you have a much more technical faculty as well, which is going to increase the difficulty of the curriculum. Let's talk about the STEM um, MBA program. The STEM MBA program, again, is inherently a business degree. It's a business, a master's in business and administration. And traditionally, this is a two-year program. There are one-year options across here in the United States, um, but depending on the pace that you want to go go with and um, the, the program, you're really going to um, be looking at a two-year program. These programs are STEM eligible, and this is where I'll define what STEM eligibility is. So here in the United States, when we talk about STEM, we have defined a program to have sufficient technical or quantitative courses inside its curriculum to identify it as a STEM program. So a STEM MBA provides you with concentrations, accounting, economics, business analytics, asset evaluation and strategy, or finance, all of these concentrations are what make the MBA a STEM MBA. So this is where you really have to define where you want to go in your future. Do you want to be a management consultant? Do you want to be in the C-suite? Well, then a STEM MBA will probably be better for you. You're not going to get the breadth or depth of of instruction in data science in business analytics from a stem mba not only that mbas here in the united states are extremely expensive and they're on the upper tier of um, um of expen uh, of expenditures um the typical curriculum you have managerial uh, accounting theoretical economics data mining valuation investments all of these courses and curriculum is what make a STEM, uh, an MBA STEM. Um, so it's a very lucrative uh, designation. It does carry a lot of weight when you're looking for employment, but it is very important that you understand how that distinction is made amongst different programs. Um, the program sh can have a minimum uh, amount of courses to make it STEM. Does it mean that the rigor is the same? That is for you to really do your research. And again, this is where an outside person can come and educate you on where you should put um, your energy and time in applying. Similarly, with all the other programs, you have a lot of experiential learning with the MBA program, but they focus much more on your long-term experience. They help you prep interviews. They have industry nights. They have capstone programs. They have consulting projects. So the resources that you're getting from this program, you need to suck them in to uh, justify the expense for a very lucrative and expensive degree. Um, it is centered around business schools as well. You're not going to be able to get an, a STEM MBA from an engineering school. You're only going to be able to get it from a business school. The faculty is going to be similar to an MSBA degree. It's going to be coming from um, backgrounds in economics, finance, and statistics. How do you choose? The factors that you all need to consider are your career goals, your lifestyle, the type of income you want to make, and the target companies. All of these 
sound like they will have overlapping companies. Obviously, you have Amazon, Google, the fangs of the world. But really, what you're going to be focusing on is what type of teams you want to be working on. Um, as an M a STEM MBA, you're going to probably be looking at more management consulting firms, um, Accenture, Bain, uh, McKinsey. Uh, you might even look into Deloitte and look for their management consulting track that can um, be ingrained in, in in data analytics or business analytics, I should say. As a business analytics student, you're gonna be really looking for companies where you're gonna be, where they have enough data. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about data here in the US and across the globe. The reality is a lot of organizations have data, but they don't know what to do with them. So as a business analytics student, you're going to be capturing all that data. You may even have to rely on a data scientist to build the database for you to retrieve that data. So this is where it all kind of, kind of comes in play. And it's really up to the individual to decide where they want to go, uh, which is really good as to why you should work with someone one on one. Another thing that you should consider is whether the programs have career development embedded in them. Do they have career shops? Do they have one-on-one -on -one appointments? And how strong are their employer and alumni relations? Employer and alumni relations are crucial when you're choosing a program because once you graduate, does that mean that they're hands off and they're no longer going to assist you? Or are they going to invest energy in time to get, help you land that first job and then invite you back to um, help the program out. So you also want to take that into consideration and not focus so much on other elements that are not necessarily important. Other tidbits is looking for full-time employment outcomes and understanding um, how students are performing post-graduation, what type of companies that they're, uh, they're, they're landing, and again, the location opportunity. The last thing I, I want to note on choosing a degree is when you're choosing a graduate degree, note that I have not mentioned any rankings within my presentation. And that's for a reason. Rankings are very skewed, um, especially US News and World Report. It can be serve as a good guide, but ultimately it is a very skewed data. And all of you who are looking to do data analytics, um, data science, uh, STEM MBA should be very critical of rankings and look at the data very, very closely because a lot of these have different ways in how they assign uh, rankings. For graduate education, it's much more important that you choose where you want to go to school because that's going to very much determine where you're going to be working for the next five to 10 years, depending on, on your career trajectory.